Oh, mate, 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 mate. Push ups in the ring in between rounds. What? He kicks him twice. Never in all my time in the history of boxing have I seen a boxer kick another boxer. Oh yeah, Adrian Broner, the good old butt thrust. No, that was funny when he did that and he's trying to really disrespect my Donna, which we're about to see now, he made a big mistake. Boom, left hook, and he goes down. But he doesn't stop with the disrespect, did you see that? Boom, try to hit him over the top. <laughs> but again, Mardana makes him pay. What we got here? Two guys going for it. Oh, oh, his mom comes in the ring with his shoe. <laughs> what? Boom, hits him on the back of the head. A couple of times as well. Oh, and she's, she's continuing to try to do it as well. Wow, if that was my mom coming in the ring, Trying to hit someone on the back of the head? Yeah, I wouldn't be very happy unless I was losing the fight, which he might have been doing, and then I would thank him up, maybe. What we got here? Oh, he turned away. Now that guy's getting wrong because he turned away and it's his own fault for getting hit. That's something you should never do in boxing. You should never turn away. In boxing, you've got to you know, protect yourself at all times. And he didn't do that. Oh, yeah, now that's disqualification straight away. And the referee's pushing them back. So with the referee pushing them back, the thing with, with referees in boxing is generally, or uh, unlicensed fighting, is referees are normally tough guys themselves. So you can't mess with referees. Let's see what goes on here. Yeah, the referee is obviously very annoyed. Oh, wow, yeah. Now, I don't think that referee will be ever referee in a fight ever again. Unless this was an unlicensed fight, then maybe so. Maybe the maybe get more work because of the entertainment that he gives the crowd in an unlicensed fight. Yeah. Oh, I was actually ringside for this fight. Uzi fighting Ashley, Ashley Sexton. He came in and yeah, he gave it the big in. And Ashley Sexton, a former England teammate of mine, this is what happens. Boom. Yeah, sparked straight out, which, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't find this a funny moment in boxing because this guy came to the ring doing what he had to do to try and get in his opponent's head. And that's what we've got to do. So he tried that and it just so happened that he got hit with a clean right hand on the chin and got sparked out. So, yeah, I'm not classing that as a funny moment. Oh, mate, 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 mate. You can't let anyone hit you like that. Oh, that's what happens. People think the tough guys then get punched in the face and take it. Nah, you can't. Doesn't matter who you are. If you get hit in the chin like that guy did just there, you're going to be on the floor. I'm going to class that as a funny moment in boxing or a stupid moment, shall I say. Oh, hang on, he gets up. He's wanting more. He's wanting to go again. Oh, well, what am I seeing right here? Yeah, once you've been hurt and concussed, like that guy obviously did when he gave him that free shot. He's not going to be the same. Your bearings have gone in your brain. You can't think straight. You can't see straight. Yeah, that's why he just got chinned again. Please don't let this continue. Don't let this continue, referee. Don't let it continue. Don't, 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 don't. Oh, no. Oh, no. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. This is it. One punch, I think. One punch and it's over. Oh, you can see he's really hurt. Oh. Yeah. Oh, he's up again. It's not even real boxing. The other guy is just swinging for the fences. Yeah, no, please. It's off. No more. No more. Yeah, good. Oh, I've seen this before. I can't remember the name of the, the guy who lets him punch him against Felix Trinidad. Now, this is some tough guy. Look at that. Trinidad can punch hard as well. Now, I guarantee this guy is not the same again after this fight. He's, he's, he's going to be punch drunk. Sugar Shane Mosley fighting the same guy. I can't think of the guy's name. He's doing it again. Mayorga, that's who it is. He's letting him punch him. Oh, 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 oh. This guy is crazy. And he's giving up the old disrespect move, whatever that move is called. But you can't drop your hands like that. Mayorga's, I don't know him personally, but I guarantee you he's got to be punch drunk off that. You can't take punches like that. Now this, one of my favorite moments in boxing history, Roy Jones, having his hands behind his back. And if you haven't seen this clip, oh my God, watch this. Boom. Look at that, hands behind your back, slip, 
slip, slip, boom. And because he's slipping, he's transferring his weight. So he's transferring it to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. Boom. And then coming over with that big right hand. And we've seen the power in that. Roy Jones, light heavyweight at the time, I think. So getting hit with a light heavyweight on the side of the head. This is what's going to happen. Yeah. Such a great, ironic moment in boxing. You've got Roy Jones again. This time against Joe Calzaghe. Joe Calzaghe, two amazing, amazing fighters. Yeah, and I love that. Joe Calzaghe is not known as a cocky, flashy fighter, but Roy Jones is. When Joe Calzaghe got his confidence in this fight, he went and, you know, give Roy Jones a piece of his own medicine. Roy Jones, my favorite fighter of all time, by the way. And, you know, did that little display of shaking his butt to him. What? Did he just kick him there? We need to go back. I need to watch that again. What? He kicks him twice. Never in all my time in the history of boxing have I seen a boxer kick another boxer. And he's just kicked him twice. Oh, and again, three times. What? Now this is turning into a big brawl. Oh my God, the fella. Oh, wow. Wow. What a... Uh, Entertainment fight. How, how have I not seen this before? In all my years of boxing, how have I not seen this before? Now, what I think's happened there, I think this guy is obviously a, been a kickboxer in his past, and now it comes automatically. When you've been doing something for so long, like I guess, and he's been kickboxing for so long, when you're getting punched and hurt in the, in the head, you're going to go back to what you know, which is obviously kicks for him, and then he's kicked the guy, got disqualified, then got punched out of the ring. <laughs> Bernard Hopkins, what, he, what does he up to now? He's always up with something. Oh, yeah, look at that. Following his opponent to his corner. Now that there is just a great mind game. And Bernard Hopkins is one of the masters at mind games. And just by doing that, following your opponent to your corner, just, just tells your opponent, like, I'm not scared. I'm in this. I'm in this for a fight. And that's what he does. Now his opponent is frustrated. Now who doesn't want to frustrate their opponents? And that's the game plan behind Bernard Hopkins' mind games. He's frustrated his opponent just by doing that one little thing. So now he's frustrated his opponent. Now I've seen this before. He gets down and does push-ups, push-ups in the ring in between rounds. And he's got a younger opponent in front of him. How much do you be thinking if your opponent's doing push-ups in between rounds in a 12-round fight? That right there is just showing you that Bernard Hopkins is one of the best ever at these mind games. The psychological benefits of doing things like that is, is crazy. Now, that being said, I don't recommend you go and start doing push-ups in between rounds of fights. No. Now, leave that for Bernard. Ooh, I've seen this one before. Look at that. The slow motion punch. What it does, your face just goes flying. And that's happened to me before, and here's a little picture of that right here. And that just shows the damage that a punch does to your face. Now, this right here is a very common thing in between rounds in amateur boxing, especially Eastern European, where the corner, the wet the towel, and they'll whiff it like that in front of your face. It cools you down and it puts that water on you. Now, what I've never understood with this is why does the cornerman not just have a fan and a spray in the hand rather than doing all of this? Because with a fan and a spray, you can still cool your fighter down and do exactly the same thing as this, but at the same time, you can talk to your fighter as well and give them instructions rather than this where you can't do anything. So yeah, I see why this is a funny moment in boxing, but it's common. Ooh, what? The referee's got a better chin than the fighters. Not again, not with this. Oh. This old guy, he got it as well. Yeah, this is pretty common. Oh, what? Oh my goodness. Oh, another one, another one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, I shouldn't laugh because I'm all about brain health now. <laughs> but when you see this referee, <laughs> oh, I shouldn't laugh, and I apologise to this referee, but <laughs> the face on him. Let's watch that again. Oh, it's great. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, why have I never seen this before? Why is this not a clip viral everywhere in the boxing community? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, another one on the chin. Yeah, we don't think about this for the referees. I wonder if this is a thing that referees are worried about when they're in there, getting punched on the chin hard like that. 
Oh, the good old Tyson Fury one. I've used this clip on a lot of my videos in the past where he misses that uppercut and it comes follows straight back through to the head. And that's why I always say when I'm teaching the uppercut, punch out rather than punch him back. It's easy and natural to punch back like this, but then you don't want to do that. If you want to know how to fold the perfect uppercut, click here and I'll show you in three minutes. Watch this next.